reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Amos, as for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the nether world, or wide as the sky. But Amos answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of Israel. Is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my body? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this time. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called the Holy the Son of God, and behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the fixed month for her who was called the burial, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, and may it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, a lot of 
people, some of the like the uh, ones we are now here in the church. So thank you for your invitation to share this uh, Christmas joy uh, with you. Today we, we just read uh, uh, a passage from uh, the Gospel of Luke about the unknown season. In a few days, we are going to celebrate Christmas, the, so to speak, the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is, it is very meaningful for us to remember uh, what happened months ago uh, uh, when the angel came to Mary to announce this good news, this message to her, and also to mankind through her. The Lord is coming. The Lord would like to be with you. The Lord is with you. I think this is the very message of Christmas. The Lord would like to be with us, human beings. In fact, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, huh? symbolically, they ate the, the apple, so to speak. <laughs> the apple, of course, is not. It's a kind of symbol. Huh? It means that they did something wrong, uh, something against uh, the good view, against the love of God for them. They don't. They didn't trust God. They didn't acknowledge, accept the love of God. And this is the very meaning. However, what struck us is God still would like to be with us, sinners. Even though he knows well that he sinned against him, but he still prefers, insists to be with us. It's very strange. Our God is sinful. Our God is a God for us, for mankind, for human beings. Why? Because we human beings are for him. And that's why God chose Abraham and then to Moses, to the people of Israel, and sent many prophets. Uh, and, and finally, he sent his only beloved son to us. This is Jesus Christ, through Mary, through Mary. And the very first, one of the very first sentence saying to uh, said to Mary by the angel is, the Lord is with you. It is very strange, very surprising. For what reason, for what reason is God to the mother of his son? Some scholars, some scholars in the past thought that maybe um, it was because Mary was a very uh, devoted girl, um, always reading Bible, uh, meditating, uh, and going to, to, to churches, no, no, not churches, at that time, no churches, uh, synagogues, uh, 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 always uh, very close to God. Maybe, maybe it is true. Uh, it is also a very good picture of Mary. However, it is not written in the Gospel about Mary in this way. You see, in our Gospel, in today's passage, it is written that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, a very remote, hilly, insignificant place in Israel, a very small village, only a 50, 60 families, huh? to a virgin, to show to a man named Joseph. And that's all. Nothing about her background, nothing about her virtues. Maybe he's a good girl, maybe he's not so good girl. <laughs> Who knows? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God chose her to be the mother of his son. For what reason? For no reason, for no reason has God chosen her to be 
the mother of his son. Very strange. Very strange. God takes his choice very different from ours. We choose things, oh, this is cheaper, oh, this is better, right? We are human, we do always, we do these kind of choices, we, we choose this, we don't choose this. But God chose every one of us, whether we are good in the eyes of others, or we are not so good, sometimes, sometimes, it doesn't matter. I think this is what we have to learn from Mary, from her experience, to experience the unconditional love of God for each one of us. Of course, we want to be good. Of course, we want to be devoted. Of course, we want to be close with God. However, we are human beings. Sometimes, sometimes, somewhere, we fall. Sometimes we are weak. However, brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you, always trust the Lord. Always trust His love for each one of us. For each one of us. The Lord is with you. This is the angel told Mary, one of the first statements, asking her to believe 